Hey, I'm Kyle, and this is episode 33 of the Vervet Forest. Quick reminder, please remember to let the advertisements at the beginning of the videos play through. If there's an option to click on an ad during the video, please click on that. If you have an ad blocker installed, please disable it for this page. Uh, watching the advertisements, clicking on the advertisements actually helps us earn money, uh, which goes to all the work that we do here at the Vervet Monkey Foundation. So it's a great way to support us, uh, especially if you can't afford to donate money or your time to working with us. Please remember to watch through the advertisements. So on this episode of the Vervet Forest, the Coco babies, Jeffrey and Crystal, finally get to meet their foster moms. The D&D &D babies, uh, Merlin, Timmy, Conjo, and Kobe, finally get to join the troop, but nothing goes as planned as per usual with those babies. And then we receive a new baby monkey named Mr. Miyagi. Lou, who we received last episode, heads over to the Sov troop intro enclosure and she actually meets Acorn, the alpha female of the troop who caused so much trouble during the release. And then I give you an update on the Goliath babies, Jerry, Joby, and Dee Dee. Jeffrey and Crystal got to meet the Coco Troop Monkey Foster Moms. The two babies spent the morning playing and having a great time while the moms sat at the fence watching and waiting. But when the first potential foster mom named Schnitzel entered the enclosure, the two babies were less than impressed. Crystal was the first one to gain some confidence and approach Schnitzel. But when Schnitzel made her first advances on the babies, Crystal dove straight into the feeding cage for comfort and Jeffrey ran all over the place, ducking and dodging, trying to stay out of her grasp. No, she's just Schnitzel was very patient as the babies did their best to avoid her. At least, yeah, because they've got their babies already. So. Luca, the foster mom who was in with Peggy and Jolie, sat at the fence waiting to have another chance. <laughs> Both babies then hid inside of the feeding cage, and Schnitzel just sat there waiting and watching. But when Schnitzel got distracted by her tail, the babies made a break for it. Then Kara came into the enclosure. She made a quick move for the babies, but they screamed and she got scared. So she left the enclosure. Hmm. Then Luca came back around and she tried her luck. What if she doesn't want to come out? So no, then she'll go out with the baby screaming, I'm sure. She cornered Crystal and they danced, but only briefly. Oh, that's why we're talking about that. But she might at least get them close enough she can catch them. I like the way she goes. She'll see a little closer. She can take the Luca cornered both babies on the perch and she grabbed Crystal and Crystal allowed Luca to groom her for a little while. She touched Crystal. I remember Peggy and Joey were always jumping on. Good job, Luca. She got, can you see underneath her? Yeah, she's got Crystal, she's grooming her. Crystal's quite calm. Another adult female named Irene joined them on the perch. Oh, 
Luca then made a move on Jeffrey, but he still wasn't feeling it. No matter how much the baby screamed, Luca stayed persistent. Luca's so good. Luca convinced Crystal to hold on to her belly. At that point, Irene came over and Luca and Irene groomed each other to say congratulations. While Crystal was getting plenty of motherly love, Jeffrey still wasn't too keen. Just grab him. Irene finally got bored and left, and Panicure, the other foster mom who was in with Peggy and Jolie, entered the enclosure. A past orphan, now juvenile, named Moki entered the enclosure. No, Moki, so Jolie was outside. Crystal couldn't really decide what she wanted. She would scream, and then she'd hug, and then she'd scream, and then she'd hug. She was all over the place. Who's screaming? Crystal. Crystal. Crystal has a different scream I But then baby Peggy entered the enclosure and gave Crystal and Jeffrey some hugs. Nova enters. Oh look, Peggy is hugging Crystal with Luca. Jeffrey was way more calm around Peggy, and he even started to lighten up to Moki. Crystal just kept on crying. Peggy and Jeffrey. Um, Jeffrey Eventually, Jeffrey relaxed and had a ton of fun playing with Peggy and Moki. There you go. Now they're playing. He's playing with Jeffrey. Yeah. And he plays faces and plays back. Oh, and he wrestled. <laughs> there it is. Proper wrestling. <laughs> well done, Moki. And after a bit of a hectic meeting of the moms, everything calmed down. Jeffrey's having so much fun now. Who's Jeffrey playing with? Peggy. Peggy. And then, Moki's playing with Jeffrey. It's going to take a little while for this whole orphan mom scenario to pan out and see who's adopting who. But right now, with Luca, Peggy, and Moki, things seem to be working out pretty well. She looks much better. Alright, this crazy storm just rolled in. I have no idea where it's coming from, why. <laughs> it's just clouds and dust and wind. Anyway, put on a jacket because it's getting cold. We'll keep going. The D&D &D babies, Kobe, Kanjo, Merlin, and Timothy, finally got to go out into the troop with their foster moms. But nothing went as planned. It was an early morning release and all of the monkeys were very talkative and alert. Kobe has calmed down and he's really taken a liking to the moms and the other babies. The babies got some food and then they snuggled up with Phyllis and Hazel. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, are they they're sitting around? Tori, you're missing this cuteness. Look at her. But things started off a little rough. There was already some aggression between the females in the troop and the moms in the enclosure. Foster mom Jessie and Merlin were the first two monkeys out the door. I suppose I can let them both out at once. Yes! They got outside, hung out, hugging each other for a while, and then they ran off into the bush. 
It wasn't long though before Merlin got scared and came running back to the enclosure and wanted to come inside. Jesse was right behind him. Merlin ran straight to Phyllis and got a big hug. I'll protect my friend. Oh, I scratched my belly. After a little bit of waiting, Merlin and Jesse went back out. Again. Then Phyllis went out and waited for Conjo, but he was pretty nervous. Go on. Just watch out for precious, please. Come on. Nervous. Nervous. Go, Conjo, go. It was a false alarm, so she went back inside. Go, go, go. Then Melandro convinced Kobe to go out with her into the troop. That's it. Show him the All right, Melandro and Kobe. But Kobe wasn't really too sure once he got outside and immediately started looking for a way to get back into the intro enclosure. I think him and Konjo are our biggest jump out risks. Of course, Kobe's tried to climb the fence and he got shocked. Did you get a spike in your... No, he wants to climb the... There we go. Lesson learned. <laughs> nope, apparently not. Come on, sweetie. I gotta sniff this thing that just hurt me. <laughs> Go find Melandro. Melandro, come find him. Melandro just sat off in the distance, watching and waiting. Then Kobe went for the fence again, and he started climbing, and we had to turn it off. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh. we'll get the fence. We'll disconnect the fence. Yeah, he's going. Come on. He's going back down. I'm just worried that Devin and Mel could grab him. Hey, he's coming up this side. Come on, Bubba. Can I hang around? Yes, please. Yeah. I think he'll come to us if he comes out, out, though. Yeah. I'm just worried about Devin and Elf grabbing him. Which one's that one? That's Kobe. Kobe. If he comes back down, it opens the door. Yeah. I tried to let him in. Yeah, no, I saw. Come on. Come on, Bub. Come on. Oh, mate. What's that? Mate. Come on. All right, you can turn it back on. Yeah. He, he just got confused. He wanted to get back in the cage and he couldn't work out how to do it. Oh, okay. Meanwhile, Merlin was living it up like a prince with his favorite mom, Phyllis, and his new juvenile siblings. She looks like a saint right now. Then Kobe tried again, Sorry. and this time it seemed like things might work out until a couple of juveniles came by. She's just gotta walk away. Yep. One of the high-ranking juveniles bit Hazel, and that started a small fight, which Kobe was not prepared for. A juvenile named Chica tried to comfort Kobe. Crumpet, a high-ranking female, redirected her aggression toward Kobe and gave him a big bite. And that was the last straw for Kobe. He scrambled up the electric fence and jumped right out of the enclosure. At this point, I stopped filming to help catch the little monkey. Fortunately, one of the volunteers kept filming on his phone. Thank you. Kobe ran all over the tops of the intro enclosures trying to find a way in and then eventually jumped over into a thick thorny bush filled with bandit monkeys. Kobe clung to a branch frozen inside the bush while Tori tried to coax him out and the bandits slowly made their way toward him. 
Out of fear, Kobe gave Tori a few small bites, but she was able to get him out of the bush and back to safety. As Tori was putting Kobe back into the intro enclosure, she gave him one last look over and realized that he had several puncture wounds on his shoulder and back from when Crumpet had bitten him. Hi. You want to go on the fence? Oh man, that was terrifying. So is that enough excitement for one day? Oh, just a sec. Oof. I don't know if you can go straight back in. No. So Tori no. took Kobe down to surgery and we canceled the release for the rest of the day. We need to go to surgery, please. Kobe's going to be just fine. His wounds aren't serious. And we're just going to put things on hold. Probably wait another week or two until things calm down and try the integration again and hope that things go a little bit smoother next time. <laughs> After the whole fiasco with Acorn trying to steal Nora and Shemesh from Holly and Priya in order to assert her dominance over the troops, since she's the alpha and doesn't have a baby, and these two low-ranking females got babies before she did, we thought maybe we should introduce her to a baby of her own and see if she would like to adopt one. So we brought Lou over to the intro enclosure and let Acorn meet Lou. But Acorn could not have been less interested in Lou. Lou hung out on her own, climbing and exploring, while Acorn sat on a perch in the corner looking bored as can be. Meanwhile, Nora and Shemesh lounged comfortably in the shady trees of the troop. The only time Acorn came down from her perch was when food arrived. So Lou did her best to sneak some food whenever Acorn wasn't paying attention. The situation doesn't really look like it's going to work out, but we'll give it a try as long as it makes sense. A new baby boy orphan vervet monkey has arrived. He has been named Mr. Miyagi, and he is quite the handful. I want to call him Horatio Hornblower, but I don't want to pay for it. I thought you were just calling him Bubble. Bubble, yeah, I call all the babies Bubble. <laughs> He's about the 17th Bubble. Go! Wah! <laughs> what a spaz. You're spilling it everywhere! Pegs. Pegs are so distracting. And last but not least, Jerry, Joby, and Dee Dee are doing amazing in Goliath Troop. Dee Dee and Joby have decided to venture off on their own and are spending a lot of time with the other adult females and the juveniles. Jerry and Mrs. Gold are still together all of the time. And Jerry is growing up to be quite the adventurous little monkey. 